Okay, this is about metric conversions. Okay, the metric system. The metric system is a system of measuring using factors of 10. So 10, 100, 1,000, 100,000, you get the idea. Okay, so we do have some base units. Um, got mass, the, base, the metric base unit for mass is grams. The metric base unit for volume is liters. And the metric base unit for length is meters. Now, these are the three that we're probably going to use the most. There are a couple of others. Um, all you computer geeks out there should know computer memory, which is bytes. And then, of course, time is in seconds. Okay, so we also have some the prefixes. So metric prefix, so kilo, which is a K, means a thousand. So it's one kilogram is a thousand times bigger than one gram. Okay, so a hectogram is a hundred times bigger than one gram. A decagram would be 10 times bigger than a gram. Okay, so those are all the ones. So really, if you put a little line here, you've got some that are greater than one and then others are less than one. So you've got deci, which is one-tenth. So a decigram would be one-tenth of a gram. A centigram would be one one-hundredth of a gram. And a milligram is one one-thousandth of a gram. Okay, so yeah, so those are the metric prefixes. Okay, so this means that if you have one kilometer, you have a thousand meters. Because a kilo, one kilometer is a thousand times bigger than one meter. So you would have to have a thousand of those little meters to equal one kilometer. Um, you can use these prefixes to convert from one metric unit to another by creating a chart. Now, here's how we remember the chart since kilo is K. King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. And I'll write that down. So King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate oops, milk. It's called a mnemonic device. So if you'll notice, it's the K, the H. Now here it's the D, but we use DA. So I always add a little A there. And then units, then D, then C, then M. It's a really good way of remembering it. Now, since the metric system is in factors of 10, we can just move decimals to convert from one unit to another using the chart above. Um, we can also use dimensional analysis, which is kind of a conversion factor. We'll do that after we do moving of the decimal. So you can use either way you want to learn to convert. Okay, so our first example is how many decameters in 561 centimeters? So I'm gonna write my 561 here for centimeters. Now we got to figure out where we're starting on the chart and then where we want to get to. So we have centimeters. So we're going to start with the centi. So we're going to go centi to deca. Okay. So we're going to start at the centi mark and then we're going to go one, two, three. So I have just moved my decimal. Well, I will move my decimal three places to the left. Now every single whole number has a decimal, but it's at the end. So we're gonna put it there and we're gonna go one, two, three. So that means it's 0. 0.561 decameters in, in 561 centimeters, okay? Let's try another one. Okay, so now this one is how many milliliters in 1.57 liters. So liters has no prefix, okay? So since there's no prefix, that means it's a base unit. Okay, so we're gonna start at the base unit and then we're gonna go to milli. So we're gonna go one, two, three places to the right. So we're gonna write our 157 here and we're gonna go one, two, three. Now, since there's a blank space, we have to add a zero. So it's 1,570 milliliters in 1.57 liters. Okay, on the next slide, we're not going to use the chart so much. We're actually just going to try and learn to use, to convert using conversion factors. Okay, so on this one, I'm still going to write my King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. 
we're still going to need that chart. But this time, let's convert 84.3 kilometers is how many, oh, we'll just go hectometers. We're only going one space. Now, in order to do with the conversion factor, we're going to use something called a picket fence. Okay. I like the word picket fence because it kind of looks like one. So it's 84.3 kilometers. Now, at this point in time, we're looking at two different units. Whoops. You know what? That's wrong. That should be hectometer. I can't draw. Yeah, let's try this again. We're going to make that an M because that's supposed to be hectometer, not hec whatever HC was. I don't know. Okay, so hectometer. So we're going to put kilometers at the bottom because we have kilometers there. We have them on top already, so we want to kind of cancel them out. Like these are going to cancel. So now we always start out with the large unit. So hec kilometers is further right than hecto. So kilo oops, is larger than hecto, because it's not working right. So we're going to start with the kilo. We always put a one by the larger unit. Now, to go from kilo to hecto, we're going one space. So every space is 10. So one kilometer is 10 hectometers. If we move two spaces, it would be 100. See, it's 10 to the first. So it's how many? So it's 10 to the whatever number you moved it. It's so like in this case, it's 10 to the first, which is 10. If I moved it twice, it would be 10 squared. Moved it three times, it'd be 10 cubed. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Okay, so then when we do this, um, let me go ahead and erase that so that we have a space to write on. <laughs> okay, so eight, 800, or actually 84.3 times 10 is 843 hectometers. Now, of course, you could always move the decimal, but that's a little, you know, you can do it that way, or you can just use it. So whichever way makes sense. Um, if you have any questions, I'll see you in class. You can ask me in class.